Corey. She needs you. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to our spring performance. This includes our middle schoolers and high schoolers. I just saw a little bit of rehearsal yesterday, and boy, how impressive. This is our favorite part of the jobs, and this is where our students shine. They're able to express themselves. I was floored. Some students who are shy and timid, that wasn't an issue. They can express themselves on stage without a problem. Maybe someday they'll be a Shakespearean actor, perhaps, or be on stage. So this year is our 140th celebration of CSDB. We just had it on April 8th. We've been here for 140 years, so it's a huge celebration for our, for our school. We had a balloon releasing celebration. And the kids and the staff wanted that concept to continue. And the performance is in relation to that, and it has CSDB history included in that. You'll see some fabulous pictures, some historical pictures, and they're going to have different skits from the, that period of time throughout history. There will be a poem. It will be an A to Z story. And I want to explain that. To have that translated into English, it, it's difficult. The AABC story includes the actual handshape, and they come up with a creative story that associates with each handshape. So you will notice when they're doing this story, you will see the ABCs incorporated. So take note to that. These students have worked so hard, I can't tell you enough. They have truly put in the hours with rehearsal, after school, during lunch. They have worked with staff. Uh, they have rehearsed like crazy and they are ready for this evening, so please enjoy. I hope you all enjoy tonight's performance. I want to give a big thank you to all the staff that worked so diligently in helping out the students. They actually wrote the script. I mean, they did it. You name it, they did it. I'm the luckiest person because I have the best staff working here at CSDB. So you'll see what I mean after you see the show. So enjoy the performance. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to CSDB's 140th celebration. Today I would like to introduce two girls that have worked so diligently all day long to perform an ASL poem. Oh, so boring. CSDB, 140 years, lame. One. Who needs poetry anyway? Not this guy. Oh, I got an idea. Hi there. Wow, I was watching you during that performance. What's up with you? Making all these crazy gestures, making fun of the presenters, insulting them? Natasha and Justice have worked so hard to make this 140th celebration a significant one and they are proud of that celebration yeah well I still don't care anything about history you know why you ever seen those old pictures so boring nobody's ever smiling no color and what's with all the silly mustaches I don't get it it's ridiculous. Hmm. Okay. The pictures, there's no smiling, there's those silly mustaches. Don't look at that. History is a part of us. We are all part of history. History defines who we are. Well, I know who I am. I'm Timmy. So you can quit preaching. 
What are you, my dad? Huh. Ho, ho. Huh. Clearly, he doesn't get it. I need to show you something. Come with me. This place is awesome. Oh, I wonder what this does. Hey, hey, don't touch a thing. Easy, easy. Eighteen seventy four. Huh? Are you ready? For what? I don't even know what this place is. <laughs> what happened? Was that an earthquake? We'll see what happens. My name is Jonathan Kennedy, and I was the first superintendent at CSTB. These are my three children. Orange John. Hello. Emma. Hello. And Matilda. Hello there. Hi, hi. The year is 1874, and the state of Colorado has not even been established yet. Oh, I want to go. Yes, please, please, Dad. I told you we have to ask the legislature for funding first, and then we can build a school. I'm your legislator. Whoa, that was fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my kids here, they're deaf, and they don't have a school. Other states, they've got deaf schools. But the deaf here in Colorado, they don't have one, and they need it. So we were going to ask the legislature if you guys could provide some funding Hmm, good idea. Okay, we'll give you $5,000. Now you just need the land to build it on. Oh. Well, we don't really have any land. Maybe the legislature could give us that too. Oh, don't push it. 5000 is plenty. Oh, man. Kids, I'm sorry. We don't have the land. We're not going to be able to build your school. Oh, no, no, no. What's going on here? Do you know who that gentleman is? No. But he's got a mustache. <laughs> Told you. Huh. That gentleman is General William Palmer. He founded Colorado Springs. They established schools all over Colorado Springs. What is wrong? What is wrong? We have the money, but we don't have the land. Oh, oh, I have plenty of land. I think education is of utmost importance. But it's very important. How much do you need? Ten acres should be plenty. I have that. I will give you the ten acres so you can build your school. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hmm. Where's the school at, Dad? <laughs> Adorable. We haven't built it yet. So you guys are going to go to school in a rented house downtown while we build the school. And when it's ready, you can go. Okay.
Okay, kids, the school's ready. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Deb. Thank you, thank you. Do you think it's colorless and still boring? Do you think history is? Well, I don't know if boring's the right word, but I saw plenty of mustaches. We'll have to wait and see what's up next. train station. What's going I, on here? I don't know. Just be patient. Hello, boys. My name is Bessie Veditz, and I am a teacher of the deaf and blind. And here, it, well, hold on. Hello, my name is Lottie Sullivan, and I was the first deaf blind student to come here at CSDB. Back in our time, people in the world didn't think that deaf and blind people could be the same as others. So we decided to hop a train and make our way to St. Louis, Missouri. And the World Fair was taking place. People came in droves. Lottie and I wanted to prove that deaf people and bl deaf blind people can be like everyone else. My name, I'm a teacher from CSDB. Hello, my name is Lottie and I am from Colorado. I don't know, do you think she's good at math? Hmm, all right, how about this? Six times eight is what? Oh, that's an easy one. 48. Oh, that's impossible. I don't know. Is she good at history? Hmm. All right. Who was the first president of the United States? Oh, is that all you got? It was George Washington. Thank you. Oh, did you see that? She really proved that deaf blind people can. Just like anybody else. Is history, history interesting to you? Eh, it's okay. Hmm. We'll wait and see. Let's see what's up next.
Hello, Matthew. Good to see you. Is this your friend? Yeah, it's my friend, but he despises history. You despise history? I don't know. It's just really boring. It makes me sleepy. Who needs it? Let me ask you, is it all the pictures and the silly mustaches? Exactly! See? He knows what I'm talking about. Who are you? Uh, my name is William Argo. Argo, Argo. I've seen that name before. Hey, guys in the audience, who's seen Argo before around campus? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, the cafeteria. Right, 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 right. Thanks. I've seen your name, Argo, on the cafeteria. Are you a lunch lady? Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm the superintendent from 1899 to 1921. Uh, what are we doing here? This isn't CSDB. Oh, no, no, no. We're actually at General Palmer's, General Palmer's home. General Palmer, that same guy? That nice guy that gave us the land to set up our school? That Palmer? One and the same. Oh, I knew it. So what are we doing here? Well, CSDB and Palmer had a wonderful relationship. CSDB was so grateful to Palmer for donating the land, and Palmer, in return, supported CSDB. Now, teachers, staff, and students, totaling 175, you're familiar with horse carriages, yes? There were 27 of them lined up behind one another. And they made their way to Palmer's home to visit. Come on, let's go. OK. Hello? Are you liking school? Oh, I love school, yeah. Oh, good. You're getting a good education? Yes, I am. Oh, good. What's your favorite class back there? Mm, I like math class. Oh, you like math. I, the w children mean the world to me. I want to give them something. What could I give them? <gasps> I know. Are we ready? Come on, head this way. <laughs> See the mustache? That's what I'm talking about. Hold on, let me check this out. Oh. Hm. Hey, that looks like the painting near Miss Hilty's office. Oh, it's a replica, cool. Oh, really? You're saying replica? That is not a replica. It's one in the same. It's the exact same portrait. Hold on a minute. You mean to tell me that that painting right there has been at our school for over a hundred years? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's been there forever. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's the same picture. Oh, that's kind of cool. So now are you getting more into history? Not really. Oh, all right, let's see what's up next. Hello, remember me? I'm Bessie Veditz. Yeah, of course I remember you. Bessie Veditz, right, right, right. 
You were the teacher uh, that worked with that girl who was deaf and blind, the first deaf and blind student here at CSDB? Yeah, I remember you guys went to the World's Fair, went to St. Louis, and you got the medal. That was you guys? Yes, you are correct. This is my husband, George Bedditz. Hello and welcome. Hope you're enjoying yourselves so far. You know that a while back I was the president of the National Association for the Deaf. And in my time, sign language was really on the decline. Hearing people around the world didn't really understand ASL. They thought it was silly. They thought that all the deaf people in the world needed to start using their voices and speaking. But I couldn't let that happen. No way. So I decided to make a video of myself signing, showing what a beautiful language ASL is and how important it is for the deaf community. That was the first time in history that anybody had recorded our language. And it'll be there for the, for the rest of history. Would you like to see? Sure. We need that language. We need to film that language and honor the language so we can pass it on to other generations. Our beautiful sign language. We have that. As long as we have deaf people on earth, we will have sign language. And as long as we have our films, we will and can preserve our beautiful language and maintain that purity. I hope that we all will have So you guys saw that. trying to express to the future deaf people how important our language is and how beautiful it is. The expressions and the movements, we want to preserve those. We cherish those. They've been with us for many, many years. The hearing people, they try to, they try to stop us from using sign. We can't let that happen. ASL needs to be saved, needs to be preserved. So I hope that the deaf community will remember that and sign language will continue to proliferate. So what do you think? History impact you now? Well, yeah. It's really nice to meet you. You as well. So you mean that if George Vedens Vedits hadn't done all he did to preserve our beautiful language, then you and I might not be signing right now. We might be speaking. Well, perhaps that could have happened. Yikes. I wouldn't like that. Is it impacting you now? Some, I guess. All right, let's see what's up next. Come with me. Well, hello, boys. 
You finally made it. I am Hubert Work. I was CSDB's doctor and later became the president of the Board of Trustees. Hubert Work. Hubert Work. I've seen that name too. Where? Hold on, don't tell me. Guys in the audience, can you help me out? Hubert Work. Where have I seen that name before? A gym, that's right. Thanks. I've seen your name on our gym. Is that you? You are correct. Now, when I started working here at CSDB, there was no gym. And what I noticed back then was this. Many of the students were so ill, and I took note to that and got to thinking and came up with an idea. The students were ill, and I went to legislator to get $100,000 to build a gym on campus. And once that happened, the students weren't as ill as much. Would you like to see the gym? Yeah, sure. Hey. That looks kind of like our gym. Oh, another replica. Cool. Oh, again, everything's a replica. You keep mentioning that. That is not the case. They're one in the same. It's the exact same building from back then. So, hold on. That gym, built 91 years ago, is still there now? Yes, it is still there. That building has been there forever. It has never been taken down. It's the same exact building. Wow. That's kind of neat. So, are you more fascinated now with history? I'm not sure. Oh, boy. All right, let's see what's up next. what they're doing here. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Well, if they're sitting here, maybe Palmer's coming back again. There's something. I'm not sure what's going on. Perhaps. The building has been damaged? What kind of building? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I sure hope not. Maybe, maybe a building fell down and they had to rebuild it. I don't know. Just one, oh. oh. Boys, perfect timing, perfect timing. Last night as I slept, I felt this boom, boom, and I was awakened to fireworks. You know what the fireworks mean? No, no idea. The war is finally over, yes. And I did hear that there would be a downtown, downtown parade, but our superintendent said we couldn't go. But we could have a parade right here on campus. So come on along.
got lucky? Got to meet real life soldiers? So lucky. I wish I could meet a soldier. That'd be so cool. There, it seems as though you're interested in so many things of date. Are you interested in any more history? Yeah, you know what? I realized I'd kind of like to see what's next. Come on along. Hello again. Uh, I don't remember you. Remember me? Um, this. Oh, I'm right, all right, grown right, up. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, of course I remember you. Yes, yes. I'm Emma Kennedy. I was one of the first students here at, C, at C, CSDB. My husband's name is Frank Cheney. And I'm here to tell you about my son, Lon Chaney. Maybe you've heard of that name before. Lon is hearing, and my husband and I are deaf, so we opted to teach him sign language. And boy, is he wonderful at it. He has beautiful signs, beautiful facial, facial expressions. We are so proud of him. And during our time, movies did not have sound. You relied on movement and your facial expressions to tell those stories. Lon was wonderful at it. It was perfect for his career. He became a famous actor, and he was called the Man of a Thousand Faces. Would you like to see the clip? Yeah, I love movies. Oh man, did you see that? The chick was all like, so scared to pull off his face, and then she finally did, and she pulled it off, and the guy was like, rawr! And the girl was like, no, 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 no. That was awesome. It seems as though as time goes on, you are getting totally enthralled with history. Would you like to see even more? Yeah, I'm starting to like it. That was an awesome movie. Let's go. Come on. Nineteen fifty. Nineteen fifty. That was the fire. I gotta tell somebody. No, do. do I gotta tell him. No, to I gotta tell him. him. Don't interfere. Hello, I'm. Sir, 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 there's going to be a fire. What? Don't, you need to be polite. Don't interrupt me. <sighs> As I was saying, hello, hello. I am hey, superintendent. Hey, there is going to be a fire. Okay. Excuse me. Respect. I'm an adult. Stop. Okay, Hello, we'll hello. See. I am Superintendent Br Br Brown. Oh, come on, come on, come on. What did I say? The painting! The painting! We gotta save the painting! No, 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 no. Luckily, I saved the painting. 
You're welcome. Good job. You saved the painting. Do you want to see what's up next? You know, mm -hmm. you got to just interrupt history sometimes. Yes. Hey, how are you feeling? Traveling in the time machine. Honestly, I'm pretty used to it now. I'm the luckiest kid ever. Nobody else at CSDB is here. They're all back in school frozen. I got one for you, Matthew. You know why they're huddled up like that? You know who invented that? Well, I'll tell you. There was a student named Paul Hubbard. He actually graduated from here, from CSDB. He went on to go to college at Gallaudet and play football there. And a long time ago, when the teams lined up, the coach would give the signal for the play, and the other teams could see what was going on, steal the plays. So Paul Hubbard invented the huddle so that nobody could see the plays anymore. Wow. Oh. You got me. I had no idea about that piece of history. Exactly. I thought I'd tell you. Tim, what's up? Welcome to 1977. You look so young and handsome. What happened? Yeah, I looked great back then, but that was 37 years ago. Not the same now. Do you like football? Oh, yeah. I love football. CSTB back in 1977 was the football state champ. They beat everybody, and they were the state champ. The they, champs? Yes. They beat all hearing teams, the deaf teams, you name it. We have special guests that we'd like to share with you. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Don Ambra. And I'm a graduate from CSDB. I graduated in 79. And I played on the team back in 77. I was a junior. My jersey numbers were 22 for my red. And my white jersey was 82. Why they gave me two different numbers, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I played wide receiver as well, safety, and also linebacker. I was the second string team because we had so many seniors at the time, 77 to be exact. But, you know, I was on the bench and got some playing time. I got average playing time. Looking back on that season, we played against West Cliff, 
and the, we had a foot of snow. We had to make our way to the school. It was a two and a half hour drive. It was a blizzard and they had banners displayed everywhere just harassing us, but we didn't take heed to that. We made our way to the gym. We suited up and got ready for the game. But West Cliffs, their colors were brown. This was a problem because it matched the color of the ball. Didn't sit well with us, but we persevered. We got the, through the first two quarters and it was 18 to six. Boy, were we worried. We were at the halftime and my coach Joe and Rick, they laid into us. They said, you want this to happen a third time? And absolutely, we said, no. So we entered the second half, we kicked off, the second string dig did, and Westcliff ran for a touchdown. Now it was 24 to six, and we only had two quarters left. We thought, are we gonna be able to survive, survive this? But by some miracle, we persevered, and we scored 50 points in the second quarter, and we ended up winning 56 to 24. Oh, what an inspirational time that was. And that enabled us to go to the state championship, and boy, were we excited. That particular day was windy. We had about 70 miles per hour winds. It was really bad. And I have a couple of clips that I could show you. Uh, but anyway, we were in the fourth quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter, and Tim Elstad ran for a 60 yard touchdown. And we took the lead. It was 32 to 16. So we had some time left. It was the other team's ball. We defended like mad, got through all the the quarters and we ultimately won. Tim got down on one knee and there's actually a clipping with Tim raising his arms, cheering in the headline. Hi, my name is Ralph Arolano. My jersey number was 51. I, play, I was a linesman, I was a guard. I played both offense and defense. I subbed for both. I was a nose guard. Looking back on that season, one player I'll never forget. His name was Jesus. And he ran for a 75 yard touchdown. Remember, 1977. Jesus made it down the field 70 yards to score a touchdown. But the ref threw a flag and he was called fouled because his mouthpiece was hanging out of his mouth and that resulted in a five yard penalty. We were quite depressed, but we persevered and we ultimately won the game. Second memory of that 77 season, it was the fall of 77. I'll never forget the player by the name of Merle. He was a rusher and would call out these plays this, that, and the other. But he didn't take heed to that. He would get the opponent from behind, tackle them. He would average maybe four or five yards a game, maybe eight, seven, game, seven yards a game, but he persevered. He never gave up, ever, and would tackle from behind. Another memory that I will never forget was making our way to the Westcliff game. It's a small town. And boy, was it cold there. There was a foot of snow. It was a farm area. And the fit football field there was, not, was an ugly one at best. It was nothing like our CSDB field. It was muddy. It was cold. It was frozen, which made it very difficult to move around freely. But we beat Westcliff. And we were able to go to the state championship back in 1977. And we beat Simla. And boy, was it a horrific day. Windy, but we played our game. We ran, there was no passing involved, but we ran and we did some rushing and we won the state championship back in 1977. And that is something that I will never forget. And how that season, we persevered through the football season and we got through it. It was a wonderful experience and a good, have a good day. Hello. My name is Tim Elstad, and I'm the class of 78. One of my favorite memories during the time I played back in 77, I have many memories, 
they're endless, but one I do want to share with you. And I wanted to talk about my very first game against Wiley. It was before the actual season started. Organizations such as CHASA or the state coaches seated Wiley at number two in the state. Whereas we were seated at number eight. But I was a little bit anxious because they were again seated number two. And that year when I was a junior, they, they beat us. I think it was 40 to maybe 16, I'm not sure, but they killed us. So now my senior year, it's the exact same team I played against before. The juniors just moved on up to the, the senior team. So that made me very anxious. Again, being seated number two, I had lost to them before, but we played and we evidently did a good job. And what happened, we annihilated them. The final score was 50 to six. They were floored. They thought they were gonna kill us, but we showed them. It was in the preseason pool. Remember we were seated eighth and they were second. And when we beat Wiley, we moved up to the first seed in the state and they went down to seventh or eighth. I'm not exactly sure, but let me tell you, that is one of my favorite. Hi, I'm Cliff Moores. I played uh, second string QB and second string, sing, string defense back. And I was a sophomore. And looking back um, on one of the games, it was against Hugo. It was an away game at Hugo. By halftime, we were behind by six points. It was 12 to six. And that Hugo team wasn't so great. It was a weak team. It was out of the entire state. And we were losing 12 to six. That didn't seem right. At halftime, Coach Joe made a decision and sat the first string and sent the second string players in. I thought, oh boy, how are we gonna do this? Okay, all right, we gotta play. But we had to win because we couldn't lose a game. We had a chance to go all the way. So we played, we did what we could, and then the first string players saw what we were doing and got on Coach Joe and said, we wanna play, and Coach Joe said, you wanna? And he said, have at it, and he sent the first string in. And the final score of the game was 64 to 12. Not bad. That is my most memory. That was so cool. What's next? Well, very sad to say, we have to go back to 2014. We had to have, have to head back to Gottlieb. <sighs> okay. Come along. Yep. Are you ready? Yes. All right. 140th year celebration. Number one, people are coming, and more and more people are coming together to see the releasing of the balloons. How inspiring. We honor CSDB. 140th celebration. C, self-esteem. E, hey, hey, come along, come together. It's really happening. B, R, all of these years, the celebration. You see the balloons? Let's release them. Let's look back on 140 years. Yay. Now, are you realizing that the 140th year celebration is an important one? I really am. 
I was really wrong about history. Before I thought it was only about serious faces and black and white pictures and silly mustaches. Well, it's not all about that. It's about what's been passed down to us. I could never imagine that CSDV had gone through all that. It's amazing. Don't focus on your errors. Just move forward. Don't let the mistakes of the past come influence them. We won this uh, academic bowl state championship in 2004. Gottlieb was recently renovated. So recent history, that means you and me and Everybody here are going to become a part of history? Yes, we are all part of history. So that means I could become famous? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> thank, you thank you all for coming. For coming. Thank for coming you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm Corey. We want to thank the entire cast for everything they've done. Round of applause for the cast. I also want to thank a few students who were a huge help. Arturo filmed it. Come on up front. Where are you, Arturo? He did the filming for this play. Ian and El Elia, come on up. They uh, actually built the props, so round of applause for them. Also, we have other students that were very helpful. They had uh, jobs like painting, for example, so round of apl applause for them. The IT team, we can't thank, yes. Yeah, the PowerPoint, thank you, thank you. Please stand, stand. Round of applause for you. And Haley. Haley. She was our runner. She was get, gathering the students. She was our runner for this. So thank you, thank you, Haley. You're welcome, you're welcome. Um, we want to thank all of you. We can't have a play without you, the audience. So thank you to you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go get some refreshments right outside here. <laughs> <laughs>